Live from WTVO 17 and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Local COVID cases climb. That means more patients for Rockford hospitals. A couple of health systems say they're also preparing for a surge of a different infection. School administrators say students in Beloit should keep their laptop chargers handy. The district announces plans for the second term. With record low inventory, houses aren't staying up for sale very long in the Rockford area. While that points to a seller's market, buyers say opportunities are there if you act quickly. Good evening, I'm Eric Wilson. Mimi Murphy is off tonight. Today marks the ninth day in a row. Region 1's positivity rate is greater than 8%. That number's at 8.5, breaking positivity rates down by counties in our viewing area. Whiteside has the highest rate at nearly 11%. Winnebago County is just under 10. Lee, 8%. Ogle, Boone, and Stevenson counties are all in the ballpark of 7%. If the region cannot get its rolling positivity rate under 8% in five days, health officials say tougher restrictions could be put in place. That warning comes after three more state line lives are lost due to the coronavirus. A Boone County woman and a Winnebago County man in his 80s, a woman older than 100. The deaths accounted for more than 30 reported overnight statewide. Illinois' fatality toll is just more than 8,800. Health officials also confirm 1,600 additional cases of COVID-19. That brings the state total to over 305,000. The recent uptick in positive COVID-19 cases in the region has state-line hospitals making space for patients. A local doctor tells Dylan Strachey the number of hospitalized COVID patients has doubled in the last week alone. As Winnebago County sees a surge in COVID-19 cases, Local hospitals say they're starting to fill up once again. Starting in probably very late August and certainly through the month of September, we saw a dramatic increase in the number of cases of COVID-19 patients in the hospital. Just in the last week, the number of COVID patients uh, has just about doubled here. A local surge in COVID-19 cases has OSF St. Anthony Medical Center in Rockford taking steps to prepare. As we saw in the last week, the number of cases begin to increase. We opened up a new unit that had been closed, one south, and that will open this afternoon. That will allow us to then accept even more uh, positive patients should they come. Dr. Mike Polizato, chief medical officer of Swedish American, says even though the hospital isn't overwhelmed right now, the increase in cases is still cause for concern. I don't think anybody feels um, like we're overwhelmed at the moment. It's certainly a very high volume. The number of patients we have right now is comparable to what we had towards the end of May. The concern is what happens next, right? What happens in November, December, January, when we tend to have pretty high volumes and lots of other things anyway. Palazzato says getting your flu shot is a simple way to help local hospitals as we move into the winter months. We also are concerned that if we have a high number of flu cases during the flu season, then that uses resources that might be uh, otherwise available to be used for people who are ill with COVID. Um, so if there was ever a year where it was important to get your flu shot, this, was cer this would certainly be it. Over the next several weeks, the Winnebago County Health Department is hosting three drive through flu vaccine clinics. You can find more out about that on our website, mystateline.com. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Dylan Siraki. Nationwide technical difficulties keep some Rockford students from completing assignments. Rockford District 205 administrators say ClassLink, the site students and teachers use to access remote classes, experienced an outage across the country around 9 this morning. About 1.30 this afternoon, RPS announced access had been restored. The outage is the latest of several issues the district's faced since e-learning began this fall. Beloit's school district has reached the midpoint for its first term. Administrators say not much will change going into term two. The district's interim superintendent announced today distance learning will resume through the winter. Rock County's COVID metric did not meet the district's criteria to learn in person. Currently, Rock County's 14-day uh, average is at 13.1 percent. So. We did not meet our metric to open in person, and so that's why the decision was made to continue with distance learning going into the second term. An e-learning workshop will be held at the Beloit Public Library this Thursday from 11 in the morning to 7 at night. Families can learn how to navigate iPads and remote learning apps. Police confirmed several protesters were arrested outside Rockford City Hall. Yesterday, we told you, demonstrators with the May 30th Alliance hosted a sit-in there. They're calling for transparency about an officer-involved shooting last Friday. 
Today, Rockford police announced six people were arrested during the protest. The group reportedly blocked City Hall's entrance and bothered employees as people entered. Police say officers offered the group a designated space, but protesters did not comply. Charges include criminal trespassing, obstruction, and assault. Illinois breaks another record for marijuana sales. According to the Illinois Department of Financial and Professional Regulation, recreational pot sales hit nearly $68 million in September. 50 million from Illinois customers, about 18 million from out of state. That brings a total since legalization to 431 million. While the coronavirus has had a negative impact on many state line industries, the local real estate market shows no signs of slowing. One new homeowner tells Michelle Rave he had to act fast to get his hands on a number of properties. During the pandemic, accountant Chad Mashburn and his family looked into purchasing a home closer to work. The father of four ended up finding that home in Poplar Grove. But Mashburn said he wanted to venture out and look into rental properties. Just this year alone, Mashburn bought three houses, one for his family in Poplar Grove and two in Rockford to rent out. In a time where inventory is low and the demand is high, Mashburn says it was all about timing. We probably requested to look at about 10 houses and only got to see about half of them because they had offers so quick. And so uh, we were finally able to see this home a couple times and uh, the process was fairly quick. Once we were able to see a home, we got an offer and negotiation just took a couple days. Coming up at six, a local real estate agent explains why it's such a hot time to buy your next home or investment property. Reporting for your home team, I'm Michelle Rave. A popular rideshare app expands service to a pair of state line counties. Uber announced its platform will now be available in Whiteside and Lee counties. The expansion means accessible transportation for riders and a shot at earning extra income for those interested in driving. Service starts tomorrow. The state line counties are two of 39 Illinois communities added to the platform. Election officials say Rockford voters are breaking records. More than 3,600 people completed ballots in the first week of early voting. Many voters are opting for mail-in ballots for the first time. According to the Rockford Board of Elections, instructions can be somewhat confusing. Completed ballots should be placed in the ballot envelope. Then voters must sign, date, and seal the envelope. The Rockford Election Office Executive Director says ensuring both envelopes are sealed is crucial to make your vote count. We've never had to reject ballots before if this envelope, ballot envelope, isn't sealed. But with the Senate Bill 1863 that went into effect for this election, if it's not sealed, we have to reject it. Completed ballots can be sent by mail, put in a drop box, or delivered in person to the election office. Now, your first warm weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Happy to say a big thank you to Mike Mott for sharing his fall picture with us. See King at WTVO.com is where you can share your fall photos. With the wind, you might have noticed those changing leaves kind of blowing around a little more. And we've got a couple of windy days coming up yesterday, today, and tomorrow, too. Again, you can always share your fall photos, whether it be the uh, leaves changing color, maybe some decorations you have inside or outside of your house are taking advantage of the beautiful weather we're expected to have uh, here these next several days. A live look with our Mercial SkyTrack camera up in Beloit, Wisconsin. Plenty of sunshine after we had a few clouds roll through earlier this morning. We're able to clear out as high pressure continues to build in behind a cold front that came through early this morning. But despite that front coming through, temperatures have actually warmed. 74 in Rockford, 72 in Freeport, Monroe, 73 right now in Dixon, and 72 our current temperature in Rochelle. Yes, Yes, the downfall has been the wind, but that westerly wind actually working to warm those temperatures up. 75, our weather watcher Bob here in Rockford is checking in with dew point numbers have come up to sitting at 42 degrees, but still very comfortable out there. We will hang on to that clear sky through the night tonight. Actually, strong winds in the jet stream bypassing us to the north, working a storm system through the high plains into the upper Midwest. That is going to stay to our north. If anything, we might get a couple of clouds kind of clip parts of southern Wisconsin here later this evening and overnight, but that is going to be it. Now, with that wind, it does stay strong and might actually increase a little bit as we go through the evening hours tonight, and that'll keep our temperatures warm, low 
50s for the overnight lows. And as we have another cold front come in, actually that front sitting back across the central plains, our temperatures are still going to be in the 70s for tomorrow afternoon. So down to 53 degrees for us tonight. Sun does set a little before 630 here this evening. Winds will be gusting at about 20 to 25 miles per hour. Back up to 72 for tomorrow afternoon. Probably the only downside I can think of for tomorrow outside of that breeze. Our sunrise officially now coming up after 7 o'clock. One thing you do have to watch though for tomorrow as the wind picks up, it's going to help mix down a little more dry air. So our relative humidity values will actually drop as we go throughout the day tomorrow. So this could elevate the fire danger. So if you're thinking about maybe burning any brush or getting out in the fields tomorrow, just know that that with combined with the drier air, you've just got a slight elevated risk. But getting out into the fields these next couple of days, no problems. Again, down just going to be the wind could get a little gusty again on Wednesday. Same thing on Friday, but look what that southwesterly wind does to our temperature. There you go. We've got 80 degrees possibly for Friday afternoon. Let's go down to the south to the Caribbean because Hurricane Delta strengthened rapidly overnight. Now a category four hurricane maximum sustained winds at 145 miles per hour. This continues to move to the west and northwest at about 17 miles per hour. This is expected to move close to the Louisiana co coastline later this week and then into the upcoming weekend. As it makes landfall, which it will, it'll be the fifth hurricane to do so to make landfall in the continental U.S. this year. That compares to our hurricane season of 2005, and we all know how active and destructive that one. It was this year, no exception. Temperatures for us, though, we are dry. We don't have to worry about any type of destructive weather this week. 77 on Saturday. We will, though, Eric, see the numbers drop back as we get a little bit more of a pattern change into early next week, and that could bring our first real significant chance for some rainfall during that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday time frame. Now, the Napleton Sports Desk with Sports Director Scott Lever. This might become a magical season for the Packers, and quite possibly fans won't be allowed to witness any of it in person. The Packers announced today that fans will continue to be banned from games indefinitely because COVID cases and hospitalizations in Wisconsin are rising. And the Packers are off to one of their most impressive starts in franchise history. They're 4 0 now after the win against the Falcons last night. Multiple players continue to pick up the slack, while others like Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, and Kenny Clark have set out with injuries. One guy who really picked up the slack last night was tight end Robert Tanyan. He hauled in three of Aaron Rodgers' four touchdown passes. He's become a major weapon in the red zone. I just had to continue to do what I've been doing and just keep, you know, playing well and stick to the game plan. And like I said before, just when plays come to me, I got to make them. I think he's got a really good feel for the passing game. He's done a better job blocking. Uh, he's just a solid all-around player. Got great hands. Tanya had only two touchdown catches coming into this season. He now has five this year. By the way, he's from nearby, nearby McHenry, Illinois. What the Bears wouldn't give right now for an offense half as productive as the Packers. Matt Nagy says the Bears have to be patient with Nick Foles while he gets used to his teammates in the system. Could we have played a lot better on Sunday? Without a doubt. We, we know that. Um, is this going to take a little bit of time? Yes, it is. It, it's going to take some time. But also know that there's a... Um, an ability to, to know that there, we need to get on this as soon as we can and score points. That's the ultimate goal. And the baseball playoffs go on, but the Cubs are in postseason evaluation mode. Lots of staff meetings will be held this week and next. Theo Epstein has only one more year left on his contract as the president of baseball operations. He says he's as committed as ever to the organization. My expectation is that I'll be here um, and, and, and the my, my expectation also is that I'm going to do whatever uh, is, is best for the Cubs every day. Our first Warren Interactive Radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. You can see Hurricane Delta is at uh, making a beeline for parts of the Gulf Coast here later this week. Thanks, Candace. Stay safe.